people. So, you guys haven't seen my face in quite a while. Um, it is Saturday, March something. I've lost track of the days. I've been going through a really tough time. And uh, up until last week, I hadn't been to the zoo in over a month. I um, And this is not even something I want to discuss, but I'm just just set in the scene. And uh, last Saturday, I decided to come, just walk around for a while, same as today, so I can, you know, wear sunglasses and cry if I need to, you know, just something to um, mask the pain a little bit in the moment. So I met snow leopards, and uh, there's four to five sandwich boards there that lead up to it from both angles and are in the exhibit area saying mask required area um, COVID vulnerable species. Now for those who don't know snow leopards are dying in zoos. Um, they are the big cat that is most catching the COVID and like I said dying from it. So this is a very important situation for people to follow the rules. And you know if people can't follow the rules then they don't they should not um, enter the areas. I mean, there's a sign posted at the front. I mean, they've gotten good about the signage. I mean, I only had to blog about it for over a year before it happened. But, you know, it says very plainly, right when people come in, mass required, indoors, snow leopards, primates. Um, indoors should actually be last because indoor spaces do not have animals in them and plus the way they have it where snow leopards is listed right under indoors it sounds like indoors in the snow leopard area because people are either self-entitled or just fucking stupid i'm sorry i'm like really pissed off right now i started out a little slow because you know i don't like to talk about my personal situation because it's very sad right now for me but you know um i am even less tolerable of bullshit with people than before. So I'm at Snow Leopards and there was several different instances. The first instance was a guy came by, didn't have his mask on. I just watched him walk all the way through. He didn't stop, so I didn't say anything because, you know, I'm not there to get in conversations like right now. Like I said, I just want to be there see the animals quickly through and you know and you know like I said if I get emotional um, because of my personal situation I can just stand there behind my glasses and cry and whatever you know so a guy walks by and I said you know finally I said you know because he kind of loitered a bit I said you know this is a, a mask required area per all the signs that are here he said some smart aleck bullshit that they always fucking say to you anyway so he continues on, and I called to the main zoo number, you know, where you have to go through an interrogation with the gal that answers the phone there. She can't just call people when you ask them to. Obviously, I know what I'm talking to when I call and ask for them to have an interpretive guide come over to the area, because the interpretive guides are just wandering around why they can't be posted in these vulnerable places when, uh, on, on weekend days when it's extra busy. There's two of them. One should be at primates, one should be at um, snow leopards. Uh, you know, like, it's not brain surgery on how to um, utilize staff. But we still continue to have two people, um, two security guards, standing um, in the parking lot or outside on slope at the parking lot entrance while people are inside the zoo doing whatever the hell they want to do. Uh, you know, it's just, it's an ongoing thing that's been going on even uh, for as long as I've been monitoring this place, 14 years. I mean, and we've had three different security, sorry, I'm like spitting now. We've had three different security companies and, you know, um, there, it's still the same procedure because it comes from management. So, I mean, that's a whole different story. Anyway, let's get to the point. So then the interpretive guy comes over and I point out the guy because now the guy's waving at me. So he knows he's being a jerk. So I said, you know, why don't you go over and talk to the guy and tell him uh, when he goes to the areas that are uh, noted to be wearing masks that he has to follow the rules. So she wanders over there. I don't even know if she talked to him, but then she never came back. So that area is completely open. So then one of the uh, catering gals comes by. She got no mask on. She walked by all the signs. 
I said, gosh, I mean, this is literally like minutes later. I said, gosh, I said, you even work here and you're not even wearing a mask. Oh, everyone's like, oh, it's insane. So then the situation happens. This other guy comes around the corner, got no mask on. I waited for him to go by two full signs that said mask required. So the snow, he's, he's getting near where the snow leopard is by the fencing. And I said, excuse me, I said, uh, this is a mask required area. These are COVID vulnerable species. So you, you need to be wearing your mask in this area. And he looks at me and um, per the self-entitlement that has happened before, do you work here? I'm like, no, I don't work here, but I can call security or you can just follow the posted rules. Oh yeah, you should call security. So he's standing there and he's arguing with me. And I just said, you know, you, you can't come into this area without a mask on. I said, they're a vulnerable species. And his wife comes over and his wife says, oh, you can't talk loud around my child. You know, screw that. Stay the hell home then. You know, people can, keep, people can do whatever. You can't monitor what happens in the outside world. Anyway, I didn't say shit to this woman. I just said, you know, I'm not getting into a conversation with you because this is a specific thing about wearing a mask. So I proceed to call security. The guy comes over and coughs in my face four different times as I was standing there waiting for security, I mean, for the lady to answer the phone in the office and then for me to tell her what the story is and tell her to send security. This guy just kept repeatedly coming over toward me and coughing and laughing about it. So when security gets there, I told him what the story was. I said, you know, I'm sick of I'm sick of people doing this kind of crap. I said they don't follow the rules. I said, and um, they never get thrown out of here. I said this is a you know this is a, a problem that has been going on and on and on. I mean, just to name a few things, you know, um, what was it? Maybe four or five years after our tiger situation, um, stroller moms were throwing rocks at our new Siberian tiger and. People witnessed it, reported it. They didn't get thrown out. And um, I reported people throwing rocks, at, um, throwing stuff at um, the flamingos while they were sitting on nests with eggs in them. They didn't get thrown out. Some woman's got her kid over the barrier waving a stick at the emu. I said, please don't do that. She swore at me, said, mind your own fucking business. I, I reported her swearing at me. Nothing happened. You know, nothing ever happens here. And I think, uh, in particular, things that I report because, you know, I've got a stigma here created by Director Peterson because she don't like my opinions about stuff. Well, you know what? It's all bullshit and it shouldn't happen and it sets a bad example for what's allowed to go on here at the zoo. You know, when is a precedent going to be set with people getting escorted out and if their members getting their membership taken away? I've got my membership taken away twice by Tanya Peterson, director, just because she don't like my my opinions in my blogs, which is completely illegal. But, you know, it, it can it, it's happened. And who knows? It may happen again. You know, I don't care. I'm in a position right now where I just don't fucking give a shit about any of these people's opinions. They need to do the right thing. I'm sick of it. I'm fucking sick of it. You know, I don't like that I'm swearing. I don't care. This isn't an official video. This is my official video. It's, it's, it's no connection to the zoo. I'm reporting what happened in this situation. Anyway, so security comes over. They asked me what happened. I told them, okay, well, we'll go and talk to them. I said, make sure you ask them if they're members because you never do and nothing ever happens to them, even though I've had my membership dinged because... Um, not just dinged, you know, not a probation thing, not a, uh, oh, you can't, you know, whatever, you can't get it, you're going to get your membership taken away, you can't get it for X amount of time. I just get mine taken away for for an un undisclosed time and for undisclosed reasons, even though I know it's because of stuff I've said in my blog. Anyway, oh, yeah, I'll ask that. So he goes over and he talks to them. I'm actually making a video while he's talking to them, which I may or may not post because it's kind of irrelevant right now that I'm making a longer video. But that's nine minutes long. Stay with me, people, because this is outrageous. Anyway, I'll try and hurry up. But he comes over while I'm making my video after he's talking to these people. Who are you talking to? He don't have the right to ask who I'm fucking talking to. I mean, my gosh, I could be talking to whoever. It don't make no difference. I said to him, I said, I'm making a video about the situation that I'm in a post. 
he can't say shit about that because that's me. I can do whatever I want to do. And, uh, you know, even though Director Peterson don't seem to think that people can have a personal opinion, you know, people can't have a personal opinion. Anyway, so what happens is then uh, one of the managers on duty is going to come up, Walker, and Evelyn, the uh, head of security gal. So we're waiting and waiting and waiting. They finally show up. So in the meantime, before they show up, the keeper comes out. Poor gal, I've never even met her before. Evidently, she uh, started working with them, with the carnivores, um, when I wasn't there for a long period of time. Anyway, uh, she saw the whole thing. So now it's a valid witness. Okay, so like my opinion, I mean, my, my, um, uh, my words, I guess, my um, observation and experience is not enough because, as I was told, that's a he said, she said thing. Well, you know what? They know me. They know me better than they probably know half of the volunteers and docents up in this place. So my opinion should matter for something. If I say something happened, it fucking happened, okay, people? This is ridiculous that if you don't witness something, you can't, you, you're not going to do anything about it. That is bullshit. Anyway, moving on from that ad in. And the reason I'm making this video and it's this long is because I don't have the emotional, um, uh, what do you call, the emotional um, um, fucking energy to fucking write a blog post. So I'm going to write like one paragraph in the blog and then people can come to the video. If, you don't, if they don't want to come to the video and see it, then that's their business. They lose out on knowing what the hell's going on here. But anyway, so I tell them what's going on. And so they send someone out to um, get eyes on these people in case they decide that they're going to um, eject them. Well, at this point, then I'm done giving my side of the story. They're going to go talk to the keeper. So I said to Walker, I said, I'll touch base with you when I leave because I want to know what happened. So I walk around the whole zoo. I didn't see them anywhere. So I'm like, I don't know what happened, whatever. Hopefully they saw them. And I'm leaving now. This is almost two hours after this whole situation happened, right? So two hours has gone by. I'm leaving. And then I remembered that I wanted to talk to Walker because now my mind has just gone back in, you know, into my, my, my own, you know, anyway. So I go back up, I turn around and I come back in because I was at the parking lot. I come back in. Who do I see? These fuckers walking out, holding their pizza, laughing, having a good old time. Evidently they didn't get ejected. So I was like, what the fuck? So I go back up to the gatehouse, have them call Walker to come over and talk to me because I want an update. Um, I said to him, so what's the status of these of these people? They go, he goes, well, did you see them? I hope you didn't. And I'm like, he goes, because we didn't see them. So I guess they figured since they didn't see them that uh, they had left. So here's my issue. My issue is this. Well, I had a lot of fucking issues, but here's my issue. My issue is three people on on um, on bikes, three security guards on bikes, and nobody can find them in the zoo. That's my first issue. Number two, I highly doubt that Jerome, the security guard who talked to them, who I asked to make sure that they were members, didn't take down their information as far as their name and their membership number, noting that they were people of interest and that the situation was being investigated and they needed to know who these people were in case they needed to be further contacted. I'm sure that that, that, that did not happen. So since they've lost track of these people, they're free to go and do whatever they want to do, no repercussion whatsoever. So these people not only ignored entrance signs about mass. They ignored exhibit area signs about mass where there is COVID vulnerable animals, therefore putting the animals at risk. And they health assaulted me by coughing in my face. And they were just plain assholes by laughing about it. So all these offenses and they're just free to go, enjoy their day, enjoy their membership, do whatever the fuck they want to do. 
It is fucking bullshit. There needs to be a better protocol up in this place. I mean, this is, like I said, 14, year, 14 years and 14 minutes. Oh, now I'm at 15 minutes later. You know, I, I can't even. I have already explained what protocol should be. They needed to find out who these people were as soon as they were reported. And if they weren't members, they needed to get their ID and their phone number and members' phone number as well, so that they can say we need to. We'll we'll follow up, contact you on what the status of this of this incident report is. Why do I have to fucking think about everything in this place? It is outrageous. I mean, like I want to let go of this bullshit, but I am not going to uh, see this happen and have animals be vulnerable. That's another thing. You know, they've always told me, don't say anything to anyone. Call us. Well, you know, a, 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 that's a big fat no if an animal is at risk. And in this situation, calling them in the meantime while I'm waiting for them to show up, somebody who has the COVID in this situation could cough on these animals. They could get sick and die. I mean, obviously, I mean, that's the extreme version of it, but it's not an unrealistic version of it. And I am not going to wait around for that. Other offenses, sure, maybe that I would call and, and whatever, just not to get into any altercations, because if the tables were turned and I was those people, oh, you can bet that not only would I have my membership revoked again, I'd be fucking banned from this place. It's outrageous what goes on here, and it has to stop. When will it stop? Will it ever stop, San Francisco Zoo? Will you ever get it fucking together to where things go the right way? Or is it just going to be bullshit forever? It's ridiculous. I shouldn't, you know, like I said, I'm having a really tough time. I'm barely holding it together. And I shouldn't have to get this worked up about something that's so simple to rectify and to... And, um, yeah, to rectify, you know, this is it. You talk to the people, you get their information, you call them up. We want to give you a status update. Where are you? You go over to them. If you're going to eject them, you walk them out right then and there. You take care of the membership situation. It's done. You know, we need new management. We need a new director. We need new security. We need new everything there to make sure that this place is running better because this is just outrageous what happens to what happens there on every level. And if you're just seeing this video on YouTube and you don't even know what I'm talking about with the San Francisco Zoo, look in the description for my my blog and you'll see over the last 13 years all the crap that goes on here under under the direction of Tanya Peterson. Bullshit.